In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to use the fractal Photoshop action. So what you want to do firstly is go ahead and open up a photo to work with. Now there's a few things you want to just check off before uh, running the action. So make sure your background is, uh, your layer is set as a background so it should look like this. If you open up your photo and it's not called background and doesn't have that lock symbol just go to layer, new, background from layer and it will set it as a background. Next, in your layer panel, uh, just go to this top right hand corner icon and go to panel options. Just make sure add copy to copied layers and groups is selected. And next, go to the image menu, uh, go to mode, make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And lastly, just make sure that you're working with a uh, good sized photo. Okay. So with that done, we need to light up our actions. So let's go to the window menu, select actions. The actions panel will pop up here to the right. Select this, this top uh, icon and go to load actions. Then select the fractal.atn file. Okay, so there we have our folder with all the different directions we can choose from. So next we need to create a new layer and it needs to be called brush. It needs to be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. And on this layer, so have the brush layer selected, you want to hit B on the keyboard, grab, a, grab your brush tool, and select the color, you can choose any color, and you want to brush over your photo. Okay, so this is the part where uh, we're going to be applying all the effects. And so I've just done one a little earlier, so make this a bit quicker. So you can see that I've brushed over my subject here, and that is pretty much ready to go. Now one thing you want to uh, just remember when using this action is uh, just notice your canvas size. So for example I want all these effects to go down uh, underneath him so I want more space down the bottom here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go to image uh, canvas size. Uh, next I'm just going to hit this top arrow because we want to uh, add some extra pixels going down and under the height I'm just going to change that to pixels and I'm going to add an extra say 500 pixels, might add a bit more, okay so now we've got a lot more room for the effects to go down, uh, to go down in, alright so that's all you need to do, so with that done you just select what direction you want to uh, use, so I'm going to go down, you click play on the action, the action will take around two minutes to complete, so let me just uh, fast forward the video and we'll then jump into the layer panel and talk about all the ways we can customize it. Okay, the action stopped and this is what we have. So let's go ahead now and go into the layer panel. So minimize the action panel and a quick way to collapse all these folders uh, is if you hit, if you hold down Control Alt and click on say the top folder here, the adjustments arrow, Control Alt Command Option on a Mac, click on that and it will uh, quickly collapse all the folders. Okay, so let's start from the top, go inside the adjustments folder. So here we have our brush layer, so this is the area that we brushed. You can see that all the effects uh, have gone down around the area that we brushed. Now keep in mind that uh, every time you run this action, even if you brush in the same area, the result's going to be different. So um, what you see here is going to be completely different to what you see again when you run the action. So if you wanted to run the action again to get a different result, just shove this layer at the top and delete everything else and then you're ready to go again. Okay, so that's a quick way to get set up again. Alright, so we'll hide that. We've got this folder here called Color Options. So if you go inside here, I've just set up a few layers that you can play around with uh, a few different color styles. So by default, uh, C1, Color Option 1 is turned on. So you can see that's just a little bit of color. Uh, you can go down the line and just flick a few of these other ones on. And you can also just you know adjust the opacity if it's too strong. Uh, you can mix two together. Uh, just play around with that. So this one. Just zoom in a bit. Yep, we'll go with something like that. Uh, so, and just at the top here, we have overall tint color, overall color tint. So, if you double click on this and use this slider here, you can apply a color uh, over the entire image, and then you can use this drop down menu here and scroll through uh, all these different colors. 
add a bit of blue. Okay, next uh, layer down we have add contrast. So by default this is set to 40%. And if you click on the word opacity and drag to the right and left, you can adjust the amount of contrast. So what I like to do is just drag to zero and then slowly nudge up to the right until you get something that looks about right. Layer below we have uh, add saturation. If you double click on this, you'll notice that by default the saturation is turned up a little bit on the um, over the entire design. So if you turn this down, you can see that, or you can turn it up higher. So that's one to play around with. All right, the folder below we have uh, the fractal folder. So this has everything inside. So let's go inside, and we'll go from the top here. So tech lines, if I just grab this folder and move it off to the right of it, you can see <coughs> you can see what these are. It's just these subtle uh, angular lines with these dots running through them. Now these sort of just sit throughout the design, just adding some subtle detail. If you go inside this folder, uh, we have a few different layers. We have the dots. Uh, which you can move around off those lines. You can even you know, duplicate them and flip them vertically. Uh, move them around to add more dots. Or if you just wanted to make it a bit more uh, prominent, you can just keep duplicating it like that to increase the glow. Uh, and if you want a quick way to duplicate these layers, uh, just select it, hold down Alt and drag down. So that way you can see, if you look around his head here, just watch what happens to those dots when I increase the layer count. You can see that glow just growing bigger and bigger. So just keep that in mind. So we have these layers here, tech lines one. Now the opacity of this is set to 10%, so it's pretty low. So if I turn this up to 100, you'll see clearly where those lines are, but it doesn't look good at 100%. So let's knock that down to 10. Uh, we have this. Uh, this layer above called Tech Lines Color One. If you turn that on, that'll actually apply some color to it. So if I just turn the opacity up a bit, you can see that those lines are now blue. I'll just make that green. It stands out a bit more. So you can see that. So you can play around with uh, even changing the color of those lines. Uh, just turn that off. I'll turn that back down. Ten. Okay, so that's the tech lines uh, folder. So this layer below, photo lines glow. If you turn this one on and off, these are the um, the glowing shapes that sit within your photo. So every time you run this action, you'll have these glowing lines will appear inside your photo. That's this layer here, all right? And you can use the mask. So if you click on the mask and grab a black brush, if if you don't like some of those lines, you can just select this mask and brush into it with a black brush to hide it. And you can grab your white brush to bring it back in. So just keep that in mind if you don't want those lines. So going down, we have our main photo folder. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see uh, what's going on there. So let's go inside. This top folder, we have photo sharpening. Just by default, I've got this turned on. It just adds. Uh, I'll flip that on and off, you can see that just adding a bit of sharpening. But if you plan to make a lot of adjustments to this and sharpen afterwards, just leave that one turned off. Okay. We have our main photo here. So I'll move this layer around. You can see that's that's the area that we brushed. Uh, let me just demonstrate that. So that's the exact area that we brushed, so we've extracted that from our background. And we have that sitting here. Now you'll notice that he looks all cut up in areas, and it's part of the overall effect. Uh, you can see sort of holes down here in his leg and through his stomach. You can see shapes sort of popping out. Now, how that's happening is if you, if I hold down Alt and click on this mask and go inside, you can see that all these random black shapes uh, are where it's going to cut out our photo, going to cut holes in our photo. So if I hold down Shift to hide this mask, they're all filled in. So you can see that. I can even move this mask around. See that? So keep that in mind that if you run the action and uh, say for example, I've got all cuts on his face, so I'll just move that over his face. 
say for example I've just run the action and this is the result that I got and I notice that his face is all distorted what I would do I would just select this main photo mask grab a black brush oh sorry white brush and just brush that away so that so now that's completely gone okay so I got good control there another little tip uh, what I like to do with this action is if I select the, the um, photo folder mask and I fill this uh, with black I hide I temporarily hide the photo but what I can do you can notice that it still left some cool little bits and pieces around you can still suddenly make out where our uh, model was so I can grab a white brush and now just brush in where I want him to appear so Maybe his torso, I want that to be completely gone and just have the effects there. Maybe his arms visible and his leg just visible. Something like that. So you can get really creative where your photo actually appears. Uh, you've, got a lot of, you've got a lot of control uh, in that area. So this uh, layer below, Photo Glow, if I turn this one on and off, you can see just around the edges, it's just that subtle glow. And if you wanted to, you can double click on this layer you can increase the, the uh, saturation, you can even change the colours you can see that it's very subtle but see the colours changing around so that there is our photo folder okay so going on down we have our glow shapes so what I might do at the moment is just turn off these bottom two folders so we can clearly see what they are so these are our glow shapes uh, and if you go inside this folder you'll see we have a handful of different layers uh, GS1, GS2, GS3 that just stands for glow shapes 1, 2, 3 so you can just grab those uh, move them around you can do what you want with these so you can see that number 1 is quite has um, has a lot going on so keep that in mind that GS1 is always going to be oh no, I'll zoom back in GS1 is always going to have uh, the most amount of effects on it so you see that there. Now above every one of these layers you can double click on this randomized color layer, you can increase the saturation if you wanted to, you can e even um, change the colors so you can see right down the bottom there those colors changing around so you might want uh, green and don't forget you can use that um, alt click and drag technique to quickly duplicate it to boost um, the brightness of it or you know you could create a, se a separate copy and drag this one all the way to the top like that and if you wanted to have color control with that one you can just again alt click and drag move this down uh, hold down alt click between those two layers create a clipping mask so you can see that we've uh, got those that same color applied but I might actually turn that one off Okay, so that's just the same with all these. You can uh, move them around. If you find that it's too heavy, there's too many effects, just turn these layers off one by one and you can see which ones um, uh, are doing what. Okay, so I'll turn those back on. Now, one layer to keep in mind that when the, uh, when the action has finished this one here GS5 blurred this one is always going to be a bit bigger and it's always hangs out to the side of it because these are blurred copies so uh, you can see that so you can scale them up higher if you want make them bigger you can even blur them out more so I can go filter blur Gaussian blur filter them out more okay so that's the Glow Shapes folder. So the next folder down is called Broken Parts. So I'll turn this one off for the moment and then turn this one on. So you can see that Broken Parts are really just um, your photo all sliced up and moved down in, direction, in the direction that we chose. So if I go inside this folder, um, again we have some different layers, P1, P2, those stand for Broken Parts or Parts 1. So what I've done here, I've added a um, a solid color fill layer above each one of these so you can quickly flick this on firstly you can use that to identify where those uh, shapes are appearing and secondly you can actually use that 
as a cool way to sort of color um, you know those parts so you can manually or you can move them manually if you want like that you can even change the blend mode of um, the color here so like overlay get a different result hard light it's pretty cool and that's the same with all these so I can just flick this one on see purple looks pretty cool that's probably a bit too much uh, and again if you say you wanted to keep it low but sort of you can erase a bit so just hit E on the keyboard and say I don't want these something like that we'll keep that one off this one green again so you can have a lot of fun sort of colouring these shapes and moving them around don't forget to duplicate them, rotate and scale them um, to build up the design even more. Uh, this one here by default is turned off, P6 large plus blurred. If I turn this one on, uh, it's one that you probably want to have a bit more manual control over. It's these, one of these shape layers duplicated and scaled right up to uh, give the illusion that the parts are sort of flying, flying towards the uh, screen. So you can turn that one on and play around with that if you want. Uh, yeah, so now we'll go ahead and turn this one back on. You can see how those two layers now blend together to help build the effect. So light effects, uh, if I turn this folder back on, this just has some two layers in it, has some subtle effects. The first one is called zoom light. Uh, you can see at the top here, around his head and shoulders, that light appearing. I'll just move the layer up. You can see that effect there. Uh, if I duplicate the layer, uh, you can see that it really increases the um, the prominence of it, so you can play around with that. Uh, this one here, motion light, you might not be able to notice that much here, but it, it appears in the direction that you chose to run the action, so if I move this layer down to the corner, you can see that those vertical lines, they sort of run through all these shapes here just to help uh, with the overall effect. So the layer here below, we have the background colour. So if you wanted to have all the effects just sit on top of your original photo, you could turn that one off, and you can see that. Uh, well, that's where, I, <coughs> excuse me, that's where I extended the canvas down the bottom here. Um, but you can rest all the effects on top of your photo, or you could just, um, you know, double click on this layer and mess around with the uh, background colors. Okay, now. That's essentially all there is to it. I encourage you to um, play around, uh, just experiment with you know duplicating layers, rotating them, scaling them, try colouring some of the broken up parts, and experiment with the photo folder. Uh, just like I demonstrated before, brushing uh, into the main photo mask, uh, and also, I'll just hide that, brushing um, well, firstly, fill in this, uh, this mask black to completely hide the photo so you can see that we just get subtle sort of details of our uh, photo and then you can grab a white brush, brush into it to reveal where you want it to appear. So I encourage you to play around with that because you can create some really cool effects doing that. Now, another thing I want to talk about with the action is if you want more control over the size of all these parts what I want you to do is in each one inside each one of these uh, actions if you just twirl it open and scroll down you'll see this one here called uh, pointer lies now if you turn this box on um, the action will run uh, let's just demonstrate this actually I'll just oops that's the top. Now, if I just play this action, you'll get this window pop up here. Now, even though this looks a bit strange, this, the size of the cells here will dictate the size of all the broken up parts shooting out from the subject and, you know, the, the size of the um, glowing shapes. So, by default, it's set to somewhere around there. But if you turn it all the way up to here, the part's going to be huge turn them down here, parts are going to be tiny, so if you want more control, just play around with that one. So I'll just cancel that. 
Now, just one more thing I want to uh, talk about. Let me just open up the example here. Uh, so, I just created this one quickly using the middle uh, action, this one here. Now, if you run the action and you notice that the um, parts aren't shooting out enough, all I encourage you to do is you go inside the, um, you know, the glow shapes and you select a part. If you zoom out, hit Control T uh, to scale it, and you can just grab these corners and scale the parts up. So if you want it to um, shoot out a lot more, just manually go down through these and scale them. It only take you, you know, a minute or two. You can create some really cool effects. And again, you can see with this guy. Um, his whole middle section's gone and I use that technique of filling our photo folder mask black and brushing where I wanted him to appear. Um, yeah. Okay, so that's it. That's uh, how you to use the action. Uh, if you've got any questions, please let me know. Thanks.